I think most of us know what the heart does in our body. It pumps the blood. And in particular, it takes in the blood from the rest of the body. And it's blue over here or in this diagram, because that blood does not ha carry oxygen. And it pumps that blood to the lungs, where that blood gets oxygenated. It gets oxygen. And then it comes back from the lungs. And then they depict it as red blood, now that it has oxygen in it. And then that oxygenated blood is then pumped to the rest of the body. And I think also most of us have this general idea that when people talk about heart disease or heart attacks, which we'll learn are two different things, related but different things, that it has something to do with the clogging of arteries. And so when I was a kid and I first learned about the clogging of arteries, and I knew enough to know that the heart is all about pumping blood through the body, I assumed that the arteries that people were talking about were these big arteries, the arteries that are coming away from the heart to the rest of the body, that somehow these these things got clogged up. So let me let me draw that a different color you could see. So this was my person this is what I thought people were talking about when they were saying clogging of the arteries. And maybe once this got clogged enough, it stopped the blood flow to the rest of the body somehow, and that that would actually kill the person. And what I want to make very clear right now is that is not what the, those are not the arteries that people are talking about getting clogged when people talk about heart disease or heart attacks. The arteries that they are talking about are the arteries that actually provide blood to the heart. Remember, the heart itself is a muscle. It itself needs oxygen. And so you have these arteries right over here. So these red, the red, uh, I guess, tubes that are depicted on this picture, those are arteries. And then the blue ones are veins. They're taking the deoxygenated blood away from the muscle tissue of the heart. And these are called coronary arteries. And this one over here, at least from the point of view of me or you, looks like it's on the right. But from the point of the view of the person whose heart it is, this is on the left. And so this right over here is called the left coronary artery, or the LCA. And this right over here in red, this is called the right coronary artery, or the RCA. And so when we, people talk about arteries getting blocked or arteries getting clogged, they're talking about the coronary arteries. They're talking about the things that supply the blood to the heart. And so let's zoom in on one of them. So maybe we could zoom in right over here. So if we zoom in right over here, that part of an artery, that part of an artery, that's the tube. I just, let me zoom in, make it a little bit clearer where I am zooming in. So I am zooming in right over there. So over time, and I'm not going to go into the details of how this happens. That's maybe a subject for another video. You can have these plaques build up along the walls of the artery. So if you zoom in over time, if the person doesn't have the right diet, or maybe they just have a predisposition to it, you can have these things called plaques form on the walls of the arteries. And the plaques, the material inside of them are, are lipids, so things like fat, cholesterol, and also dead white blood cells. So it's this kind of, it's this kind of messy substance right over here. And this is what we call a plaque. And the formation of these plaques that obstruct the actual blood vessel, that actually obstruct obstruct the artery, we call this, let me make, sure, make it clear that you see that this is a, a kind of a tube right over here. Let me draw the blood. We draw the blood. So this formation of a plaque we call atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. Athero, atherosclerosis. Athero atherosclerosis. And so you can imagine, if you have these things build up, it's, it's, it's narrowing the actual vessel that's supplying blood to the rest, to downstream to that downstream from that obstruction so it would be it would be disrupting the blood flow downstream so it would be disrupting the blood flow right over there and that general process that we talk about of that restriction of blood flow that ischemia that's happening so ischemia is a deprivation of of blood flow and oxygen downstream from this right over there that's what we call coronary heart disease or cor or <laughs> not actually a coronary artery disease or heart disease so let me write this down. So this causes coronary coronary artery disease, coronary artery disease, which is sometimes called heart disease. Saying coronary heart disease would be redundant because coronary is also already referring to the heart. So another way this is also sometimes called heart disease. 
heart disease. And so you can imagine if the downstream, the muscle tissue, is not getting all the oxygen it needs, especially maybe when this person's, whoever's heart this is, when they're exerting themselves, they need more oxygen, the, pump has, uh, the heart needs to pump a little bit harder. If downstream, these, these cells are not getting all of the oxygen they need, you can imagine that the heart maybe is not able to provide all of the functions that whoever's heart this is, that they need it to, fun to, to do. And when that happens, that's called heart failure. Heart failure. So heart disease is one of the causes of heart failure. Heart failure. Now I want to be clear, heart failure does not mean that the heart is stopping, that the heart is stopped and that the person is dead. It literally just means that the heart is failing to do what it should be doing. It's failing to provide the needs of that person. So it's not pumping hard enough or it's not pumping well enough to 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 provide, I guess, you know, adequate function for that person. The other symptom that actually might occur when someone when someone has coronary artery disease where they have this obstruction where you have this ischemia, this deprivation of oxygen downstream from this obstruction is that they might experience this kind of strangling chest pain. And that's called angina pectoris, sometimes angina. Very few people say the pectoris part. You'll sometimes hear people say, oh, he has angina. So that's, that could also lead to angina pectoris, which is really just which is really chest pain. And angina literally comes from meaning kind of the strangling feeling. And then the pectoris is in the chest. So it's literally a strangling feeling in a chest. And this is a symptom of, uh, of heart disease. Now, this is already not a situation you want to go get into, because already your, your body is not able to function as well as it maybe could be, as maybe as well as it could. But sometimes, so what, what I've just described here is a plaque, but some plaques are actually unstable. So this plaque could just grow and grow and grow, and it would make probably the heart disease worse and worse, and the heart failure worse, and the angina pectoris worse. But if this plaque is unstable, it can actually rupture. So you can imagine all this blood flow as this plaque grows, the blood flow becomes a little turbulent around it. The blood flow becomes turbulent around this plaque. I'm drawing the blood kind of. You know, because it has to go really fast through this narrow section, and then it comes out turbulent on the other side. It could create all of these frictions and all the rest. And at some point, you could imagine that this plaque is unstable, and it could actually rupture. So let me draw a ruptured plaque over here. So let me draw, try to draw the same one, but I'm going to draw it ruptured. So now, now this plaque has ruptured. It got so big, and maybe the turbulent blood flow helped stimulate this and whatever else. But at some, for whatever reason, it ruptures. So it ruptures. And when it ruptures, now all of a sudden, and I'm doing a simplification of the process right over here. Now all of a sudden, this, the kind of this, the, the contents of this plaque, the lipids, the the, the cholesterol, the fats, the, the the dead white blood cells are now all of a sudden exposed to the blood flow, and in particular to the clotting factors in the blood. And this is highly thrombogenic material. Thrombogenic, very fancy word, thrombogenic. But that just means that it tends to cause blood clots. A thrombosis is a blood clot. So what happens is, is as soon as this type of thing happens, and it could literally happen in seconds or even minutes, all of a sudden you could have these clotting factors form a clot, form a clot right over here, right at the actual plaque. And as this happens, it starts to really, really, really obstruct the blood vessel. All, and sometimes it could even completely obstruct the blood vessel. And when this happens, you are, you, are, you, are, you are significantly depleting the blood flow going downstream from there. Or you might, even be, you might even be shutting it off. And when you do that, the cells downflow, the, the, the cells downstream, I should say, the cells downstream will no longer get oxygen, and they will die. And this, is, this right over here is called an infarction. Or they are, so that is an infarction. Infarction. An infarct is actually dead heart tissue. And so you can imagine once heart tissue begins to die, so then when the heart tissue begins to die, this is even worse than what we were describing with coronary artery disease. Now, not only were they, with coronary artery disease, they're just not getting enough oxygen. Now they're actually dead. They're turning into dead tissue. And this process of completely, or almost completely, or completely depriving cells of oxygen so that they die, this is a heart attack. This right over here. So let me, let me completely obstruct this artery to make the point clear. 
this right over here is a heart attack. This or this is the primary cause of a heart attack. There's someone. There's some. It's, it's less likely, but sometimes a plaque could also go downstream and kind of form a, a thromboembolism. So it would be it would be a, it would it would be a clot. It would be a it would be this this thrombogenic material that clots around it, and then it would actually go and block uh, an artery further downstream and be an embolism. And so that could also block. The, the the artery and cause tissue to die, but the main cause is just this this intense clotting that can occur pretty quickly and completely obstruct the artery. Now there's one there's one last word I want to touch on because it sometimes is mixed in with all of these other words, and that is and that is cardiac arrest, and that's because sometimes they're used in the same context, and they are. These things can lead one one thing can lead to another, but cardiac arrest. A heart attack is not cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest is the actual is the actual dying of the heart. What I've just described in a heart attack, people can have a heart attack and they will have they will have some part of their of their muscle tissue die, some part in infarct, and that's why they call it a myocardial infarction. Myocardium is is the tissue of the heart, is the muscle of the heart, and it is dying. So they call it sometimes a heart attack is called a myocardial infarction. That is not cardiac arrest. Because you can have some of your heart tissue die, and you can survive. Your heart will be impaired, but you will continue to live. Cardiac arrest is literally your heart stopping. And this would obviously cause someone to die. So cardiac arrest is literally your heart stopping. So if you have a bad enough heart attack, if you have enough of your tissue get get starved of oxygen so that it dies, so that it so that it becomes it, 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 infarction occurs, then you could lead it could lead to cardiac arrest, but it always won't lead to cardiac arrest. And frankly, a heart attack is not the only thing that can cause cardiac arrest. And I also want to want once again want to differentiate cardiac arrest. From heart from heart failure because they sound the same. Sounds like the heart is failing, but cardiac arrest is the heart stopping. Heart failure to, is essentially just saying that the heart cannot provide all of the needs for the body.